In this video, we will discuss starting a low temperature device, starting a software, harvesting crystals, and manipulating them under the microscope. If the cryo stream is off, we will need to turn it on. First, press the blue start button one time. The screen now says start up, and the bottom status screen will go through a startup procedure. This takes about 15 seconds. Once the status window says cool to 100K, the cryo stream is ready. Press, press the blue start button one more time to begin cooling. The top temp screen now displays the current temperature. It will take approximately 20 minutes to go from room temp to 100K. Most of the time it will already be at 100K and you'll be able to skip this step. The software necessary to run an experiment will oftentimes already be open. This allows the computer to communicate with the instrument and must be running before you begin. Apex 3 is the software that we use to collect and process data. Once Apex 3 is open, we need to create a new project by clicking the paper icon on the top left of the window. In the new sample window, we need to enter the project number in the name box. The group and folder entries do not need to be edited. Click OK, and after a few seconds, Apex will create your project and you'll see the menu bar on the left side of the window displayed. It might be necessary to connect the software to the instrument. Click the instrument dropdown and select connect. When the pop-up box appears, simply click connect. Once connected in the setup menu on the left, click center crystal. When the buttons on the right appear, click center to move the goniometer into position. Now the instrument is ready for a sample. To open the doors, press the square green open door button, pull the two black handles toward you and slide the doors apart. Next, we move to the microscope area to prepare the sample. First, grab a clean slide and put just one or two small drops of oil on it. You don't want to overload the slide with oil or it will get messy very fast. Be sure to wipe off all of the tools you plan on using, like the spatula, needle, and razor blade, to avoid contaminating your sample. Touch the end of the spatula into the oil on the slide. This will help the crystals in the vial to stick to the spatula. Scoop out some crystals and touch the spatula back into the oil on the slide. It might be necessary to go back for a second scoop. If the crystals are really stuck to the vial, you might need to use some force to scrape them off. It's also helpful sometimes to use the needle to scrape the crystals off of the spatula and into the oil on the slide. Now that we've harvested crystals, it's time to examine them under the microscope. At GU, we use these very thin, flexible acupuncture needles to manipulate the crystals. Even though there is a camera connected to the microscope, it's best to use the eyepieces and not the screen when poking around at the crystals. It takes some time and some practice to become proficient at manipulating the samples under the microscope. The first thing I'm going to do is take a quick look at the crystals I've harvested to identify a few potential candidates for data collection. Once you've found a crystal or crystal piece that you like, gently move it away from the other crystals and to the edge of the oil blob. Keep in mind that we generally don't want our crystals to be larger than a half millimeter in size. 
You can adjust the scale bar displayed on the screen to match the zoom level of the microscope. You can see the crystal piece I've chosen is too large, so it will need to be cut. Also, the right side looks as if there is another small crystal stuck to it. So we'll focus on cutting the crystal to leave the left side intact and at an appropriate size. This next part is a bit difficult to see when looking at the computer screen, but is quite clear when using the eyepieces. The microscope is equipped with a polarizing analyzer, which can help to assess crystal quality. Notice the background has now gone black and the crystal appears to glow. As I rotate the crystal, it becomes dark. And if I continue to rotate, it starts glowing again. The transition from light to dark and back again should be instantaneous across the whole crystal. It should not look like a shadow moving across the crystal. Be on the lookout for cracks and occlusions as well as crystals that have one light side and one dark, dark side. These are all signs of problematic crystals. This crystal appears to be fine. So I'm going to turn the analyzer again because I prefer working with a white background. I've oriented the crystal so it's in a good position for cutting. I have moved the crystal almost completely out of the oil and oriented it so the portion I want to keep is at the top. This will, make, this will help me make a more precise cut, hopefully without damaging the crystal. I find it easier if I zoom out a bit as well. Cut the crystal, I'm going to use a razor blade and a two-handed approach. First, I'll roughly position the razor blade over the crystal. Next, I put the corner that is in my left hand on the slide. I can then use my right hand to pivot the blade into the exact position for the cut. At that point, I gently and smoothly chop down by lowering the right edge of the razor blade. All of this is done while looking through the microscope eyepieces. Hopefully, a clean cut was made, and there are now two pieces of crystal. Remember, I was targeting the top portion of this crystal, and I want it to be no more than half a millimeter in size. It looks like I got what I needed. It was difficult to see exactly what my hands were doing, so we'll take a closer look to make it more clear. First, I pin one corner of the razor blade to the slide. Next, I use my other hand to pivot the blade into position exactly where I want to cut. I then smoothly lower the blade to chop the crystal in the desired spot. It takes a great deal of practice to get good at making small, precise cuts. I encourage you to practice any chance you get. 